Recently, the three major communications network operators in China all released their subscriber figures as of April. These figures have raised questions about China's actual 5G development. According to the data, China Mobile has 205.3 million 5G subscribers, China Telecom has 117.8 million subscribers, and China Unicom has 98.6 million subscribers. Which means the total number of Chinese 5G subscribers is about 420 million. This is an increase of about 220 million, or 110 percent, from the beginning of the year. As Beijing claims, China's 5G penetration rate has now reached 26 percent, making it the country with the largest 5G network penetration rate and the largest number of 5G users in the world. While everyone is cheering for the boom of the 5G network in China. A secret has been unintentionally released. The above data shows that the combined number of users for the three operators has reached 420 million. However, the cumulative 5G handset sales in China are only about 270 million units as of April, according to the National ICT Academy. As we all know, there are three conditions that need to be met in order to enjoy 5G networks: a 5G smartphone. An established 5G network and a 5G package provided by telecom providers. Therefore, this could mean that 150 million or 35.7 percent of the Chinese users are actually not using 5G. Why is this? We interviewed Mr. Wang, a friend who lives in mainland China, through the phone. He said many telecom providers are trying to get as many users to upgrade to 5G as possible in order to popularize 5G networks, which is a state goal of Beijing. However, they did not do it in a conventional way. When 5G was first launched, providers dramatically reduced the speed of the 4G network, and then claimed to the users that 5G network could be faster and have less traffic, attracting a group of users with high-speed internet demand. On the other hand, the providers continued to promote 5G packages by cold calls, which would cause many to eventually buy the plan because of the constant pestering. For those who insisted on not using 5G, the sales staff will ask you whether you are willing to upgrade to 5G for free in order to access the services in the future and retain the same plan for now. They were counted as 5G users as well. This is probably why there are 150 million people who do not have 5G phones but are considered 5G users. However, the false user data has created an apparent prosperity of 5G in China. What is more worrying is whether China 5G itself is a bubble or a scam. In recent years, 5G has been hyped up so much in China that people are beginning to imagine what life will be like when the 5G era arrives, from virtual driving to smart homes to remote virtual surgery. Moreover, with favored policy and support from Beijing, Huawei, the largest 5G Chinese manufacturer, is also advertised as a national pride. According to Chinese media reports, China has now built the world's largest 5G network, with about 810,000 5G base stations in operation, accounting for more than 70 percent of the world's share, making it a worthy pioneer of 5G networks worldwide. Undeniably, 5G technology is certainly an improvement compared to 4G. It can provide higher bandwidth, higher capacity, lower latency, and faster wireless data services. But the disadvantages of 5G technology is also very obvious. There are two types of 5G technology. One is slightly better than the existing 4G, called the Sub-6 5G, which is now the most widely commercialized 5G. There is another type called the Millimeter Wave 5G, which can provide greater capacity and faster network speed than the Sub-6 5G, but has not yet been commercialized. There are some even more obvious problems with 5G. Sub-6 5G compared to 4G, due to the higher frequency used, has a shorter transmission distance, resulting in a smaller transmission range, lack of penetration, and could easily be blocked by obstacles. Even within the same building, there will be a relatively large gap in network speed in different places. Similarly, the transmission distance of 5G base stations is only one third that of 4G. To achieve the same coverage of 4G, more stations need to be installed by the operator. Generally, the number of 5G base stations installed in the same area will be 1.5 to 2 times that of 4G. For example, Shanghai Minhang District is China's first gigabit 5G demonstration area, with 26 base stations per square kilometer. According to the plan, about 50 base stations per square kilometer need to be installed to achieve full coverage. 
The second disadvantage of 5G is that the construction cost of stations is very high. Although the cost of one station has dropped from 600,000 yuan to 400,000 yuan recently, it is still 65% higher than that of 4G base stations. A report from a Chinese statistical agency shows that it will take at least five years for operators to build a mature 5G network in China, which means covering most medium sized cities. And the investment will be hundreds of billions of dollars. If it wants to be as popular as the 4G network, it will take at least a trillion yuan. What's worse is that the telecom providers have not yet fully recovered from their investments in the 4G network construction. In the 4G era, the cumulative investment of China Mobile alone reached 450 billion yuan. If they wish to upgrade to the high-end millimeter wave 5G, which has a base station coverage of only about 100 meters, the investment will reach more than 10 trillion for constructing stations alone. If they decide to take out a bank loan, the operator's profits will never be enough to repay the interest. Data shows the number of 5G base stations built in more than two years is only comparable to the 4G base stations built in the first year during the 4G era. This can probably explain the difference in terms of investment. The third shortcoming of 5G is that its equipment consumes a huge amount of electricity, resulting in exceptionally high running costs. According to data provided by China Tower, the average power consumption of a 5G outdoor base station is about 3.8 kilowatts, more than three times that of a 4G base station. Some experts estimate that if 5G achieves 4G coverage, the cost of electricity alone for operators will be 6 to 12 times that of 4G. According to the latest data from the GSMA, China now has more than 810,000 5G stations. Assuming that the three major carriers turn on all the completed 5G stations and that all 5G base stations are shared among the three carriers, it will cost about 19.2 billion yuan a year in electricity bills alone. Considering that the sharing rate of stations is now 80%, the actual cost for the three carriers will be higher than this. Such a high operational cost has already forced the operators to shut down 5G base stations when idle. Currently, many 5G stations in China are shut down from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. the next day. While the providers explain that 5G base stations are smart and will automatically shut down or reduce capacity when the number of users are low in order to save energy, the chairman of one of the three major carriers, Unicom, admitted in an interview that this was a desperate move to save electricity. If the planned 2 million base stations were to be completed, it will cost 24 billion yuan a year in electricity alone, which is two times Unicom's annual profit. From the data, it can be concluded that the more stations are built, the more laws for providers. If full 5G coverage is achieved, electricity costs alone will be many times the operator's current annual profits. Even if only 1% of the country is covered, electricity costs will be more than enough to bankrupt the three major operators, which means 5G is not so sustainable. From the financial reports of the three carriers, you can see how they've been suffering from the costs. Even the largest among them, China Mobile, could not bear the costs of 5G equipment. It is currently integrating 5G to the original 4G network and could not establish an independent 5G network. What about the consumers? Do they really find 5G attractive? First of all, due to the imperfection of 5G infrastructure, the coverage of 5G is far from universal so the user's experience is relatively poor and far from ideal. In fact, many users switch back to 4G shortly after. Secondly, the price of 5G packages are higher than 4G, which is already considered somewhat expensive by most people. And most users would not need such high-speed internet. Moreover, most of the current smartphone apps are still based on the 4G network, and the speed is more than enough. So why would users choose to spend more and switch to 5G? Last year, China's former finance minister Lo Jiwei has pointed out in a media interview that 5G development still has many obstacles. Among them, he said the three major problems will be immature technology, high costs, and low applicability. In addition, he questioned how operators are blindly repeating the 4G network construction model and trying to obtain wide area coverage, when in fact it's simply not applicable. This 5G 工业互联
但是现在走的是另一条路，走的是运用的是对应的我们的手机，对民用的，是民用的路，是走偏了，您觉得？那我我没说啊，我没说，这是你说的、啊，我猜的，<笑>你猜的，我没说。The above interview is blocked by most Chinese social media platforms, but cannot stop the brewing suspicion of Chinese netizens. Some people began to question the overhype of 5G and the actual feasibility of the projects. In addition, Huawei was unable to obtain high-end chips due to the U.S. sanctions, suffering from lower revenue and reduced marketing expenses. This caused the publicity of 5G to drop in China as well. Mr. Wang, who we interviewed, said the providers are trying to attract users back to the 4G plans by lowering the prices. He also noted that the 4G package he was using was originally 98 yuan per month, but when he tried to end the contract, the mobile company gave him a discount to 68 yuan per month, along with a higher bandwidth. Besides the obstacles that generally exist in the Chinese market, China's 5G is also facing a blockage from the upcoming rapid development of 6G. Last October, the United States Telecommunications Industry Solutions Alliance announced the formation of the Next G Alliance, and that 11 new members, including Apple and Google, had joined the 6G alliance. The alliance now has 21 members, including Ericsson, Facebook, Intel, Microsoft, Nokia, Qualcomm, Samsung, and other telecom companies from around the world. They are ready to promote North American mobile technology leadership in 6G and beyond in the next decade, while facilitating the long-term evolution of 5G. It is worth mentioning that Chinese companies, including Huawei and ZTE, have not been invited to join the alliance. As reported by an article from Sina Finance, pushing the 5G industrial network within China will not help Chinese manufacturing, but may even hinder it. The report suggested. If Chinese companies implement 5G industrial network, it will lead to a significant increase in production costs. China's manufacturing industry has a low profitability and relies on the large trade surplus to generate value for the economy. The increased costs will result in exporters who are already struggling to lose their advantages to compete with manufacturing in India, Africa, and other emerging economies, halting China's foreign exchange revenue. The awkward situation that 5G is currently in is leaving operators in a dilemma. Perhaps in a few years, when we look back at 5G, we may find that it is far from what was advertised. The fairy tale that is 5G may just be a fantasy blown up by equipment manufacturers, or simply a scam.